Hey, welcome back. My name is Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to Spanish and English speaking people. And I've got a message prepared for you today that I believe is so, so important. I couldn't sleep last night and <clears throat> I was thinking all night and as I woke up this morning, it was like the Lord put this message in my head and I just jumped out of bed. And you can ask my wife, I ran in and said, Honey, let's get it ready. I've got to record this message. Um, years ago, uh, one of the first messages that I preached for this online ministry was the gospel and if you get a chance please watch that because it portrays clearly the gospel of salvation and how to be saved but it was when I was first learning and the quality is not the best there's kind of an orange tint to that video because I had old lights and in my little office here I've got three windows and I've got these blinds that have kind of an orange color they're a wood that's kind of orange and so the sun would come through and make an orange tint so that video is not the best quality but if you're interested in the Bible and the truth just listen to what was said in that because it's the gospel of salvation I tell you it's been a blessing over the years uh, it's almost two years it'll be in September that I've been doing this online and um, I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and said brother breaker I got saved watching that video even though it was the poorest of quality I got saved watching that video entitled the gospel so I figured, you know what, I think what I'll do is I'll preach another video on the gospel. And this video we'll call the gospel of salvation. And what I want to do, and this is so important, is I want to present unto you clearly what the gospel is in the Bible for today. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more about how it began and how it was formed. See, the church age started as a transitional period. It started with Jews, for Jews, to Jews, and it changed to Gentiles. So I will talk about that a little today. And, and uh, people have been emailing me and asking me to please explain this, because once you get a hold of this, oh, you understand and you believe this, you cannot be deceived and fall into a false religious organization. I'll just say it that way. If you understand what I present today, you'll look at all these other so-called churches in the world today and you'll say they are cults that preach lies because they're not preaching the right gospel of salvation. So that's what I want to do is I want to present unto you the gospel of salvation. Let's start with Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. I hope this will be a blessing to you. I hope this will be an explanation that will help. A lot of people are emailing and writing and saying, please explain because they don't see sometimes the difference between the who and the what of salvation. Others have written and said, we totally understand it, we appreciate it so much. So I hope if you're a true Christian, a true Bible believer, that you will also be helped by this message and you will appreciate it. Ephesians 1.13 will be our opening text this morning. And it says, In whom, also, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise so there are the words the gospel of your salvation what is the word gospel well the word gospel is uh, a word that comes from the Greek and now I hate to run to the Greek I learned the Greek in Bible school and I like to tell people I forgot it as quickly as I could when I got out of there all I need is a King James Bible amen but the word gospel comes from uh, the Greek word euangelion. Let's see if I, I've got my L backwards. Euangelion. Now, when I say that word euangelion, euangelion, what does that sound like? Euangelion. In Spanish, the word is evangelio. Euangelion, evangelio. It's very close. Well, the word we have in English that's very close to, God, to this word, even though this word is gospel translated, euangelio, it's where we get our word evangelize. Euangelio, you see the double uh, gamma is an, is an NG sound in the Greek language. So evangelize. So when you preach the gospel, you are evangelizing. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to evangelize. Now, in English, when we say the word gospel, what do we mean? Well, gospel means good news. And sometimes that's confusing. Because when I talk about the gospel, what I'm talking about is 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. 
So when I automatically say the gospel, most people think 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. But did you know there's more than one gospel? There's more than one good news in the Bible? Matter of fact, I'll show you two today. I think I have a, a, a teaching online titled Seven Gospels. There's seven different times God gave good news in the Bible. So when we talk about the gospel of salvation, we need to define which gospel. Well, I often and always am referring to this gospel for our salvation for today. And this is the gospel that God revealed unto Paul. Let me write here. You have Jesus showing up. So you have a ministry of Jesus. Before Jesus came, there was a man named John who had a ministry. Before that, all the Jews were under Moses' ministry because they were under the law. So as you read through the Bible, you have to rightly divide. Well, when Jesus came, then came Peter and the early apostles. And then as you read through the Bible, eventually up shows a guy named Paul. Now why? Let me move him over a little bit because we've got lots to talk about today. What is Paul in the Bible? I messed that up. Let me erase that. Who is Paul? Why is he in the Bible? A lot of people don't understand why Paul is in the Bible. That's why I've tried to preach as many messages as I can about the importance of Paul. Because God gave us the Apostle Paul today, and as we're going to see in this sermon, God gave Paul this gospel. Now, some people have emailed and said, I don't understand how God revealed to Paul the gospel if Peter preached the gospel before. And that's the thing that they're a little confused on. How is it that Paul could say that God revealed to him this gospel if this is the gospel that Peter and the apostles were preaching as well? Well, the easy answer is it's not the, the gospel that the early apostles were preaching. But then again, it is the gospel. See, they were preaching the good news. So what I'm going to have to do is explain that to you in a way where you can get it. Because there are more than one good news. And yes, Peter and the early apostles were preaching the same good news that, that Paul did, but with one exception. There was something that Paul was preaching also as well when he preached this gospel. That is what saves us. Now, you'll understand. I know it sounds confusing, but you'll understand. So let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. I try to put this in every preaching that I do, because this is the gospel of your salvation. This is the way that you're saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand... Now that's important because if you want to be saved, because verse 2 says, by which also you're saved, the only way to be saved is to stand by faith in this gospel. So it says, wherein you stand, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now how am I going to do this? The gospel has five points according to Paul. So let's look at these five points. I hate to write so small you can't read it. But he says the first one is Christ died. These are the five points. You go back to that YouTube video on the gospel and I present clearly the five points of the gospel. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. And then it's according to, and I'll abbreviate, the scriptures. Now that is the gospel according to Paul. Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. I hope you can read that. I know I wrote it very small. This is what God says saves us today when we trust the gospel. Now over Peter and what the good news that they preached was almost identical with the exception of number two. So when Peter and the early apostles went out and preaching about Jesus, they preach Jesus was crucified, so Jesus died. They preached that he was buried, and they preached that he rose again. And oftentimes they proved it from the scriptures. 
But look at what's missing. And I don't want to give it away. I want to get there to where we all get it together. But I got four points. I don't have five. What is missing? There's something missing. There's something that God revealed to Paul that tied this gospel together. And uh, just a little foreshadow there. It's point number two. But we'll get to this. So there are two parts to this gospel. The good news. One part of the good news, because the gospel is the good news. What is the good news of the gospel? Is the good news that Christ died? Is it good news to hear that someone dies? That's not good news. Is the good news that he did it for your sins? No, because that means you're a sinner. That's not good news for me to hear that I'm a sinner. Is the good news that he was buried? No. It's not good news that someone's buried. So what is the good news when the Bible talks about the good news? What is the good news? Well, the good news, there's two different good newses. The one good news is this, this one, that Christ rose. And that was the main focus that they were preaching back then in Peter and the Apostles' time. The good news was that Jesus rose again. And there was also one more thing. The good news was that Jesus was Messiah. Now that's something that Paul very seldom preached when he was preaching this gospel. But Jesus was the Messiah, was the main thrust of the preaching of the early apostles. So the good news that Peter and the apostles were preaching was that Jesus was the Messiah and he rose again. The good news from here that Paul is preaching is that it was all for our sins. It's all what Jesus did. This is what I like to call the difference between the who and the what of salvation. I've taught a message on this. If you get a chance, go to YouTube. And you can look up the who versus what of salvation. Now, what do I mean by the who versus what of salvation? Well, as we get into this, what we'll find is that Jesus' ministry, John's ministry, Peter's ministry, all was to Jews. Now that cannot be denied. Jesus said, I came not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I came only to them. Paul's ministry was to Jews and Gentiles. And eventually it went to only Gentiles. Yes, Jews can be saved today, but it, mostly Gentiles are being saved today. Many Jews are not. But there will be a time shortly in which Jews will be saved again. So let me go ahead and write over here, the tribulation period is for the Jews. And so let's make a little division there so you can get that. And here we have a change from Jews more to Gentiles, but also Jews can still be saved today. Now, <clears throat> with that stated, we see the difference between the who and the what of salvation. We need to go to the Gospels, to the book of Acts, and see something, for it is important. Because like I said, I've had a lot of people emailing me, asking me, well, how is it that, that, you, that sometimes people say Peter and Paul preach the same gospel, but yet sometimes when you preach, you say that Peter and Paul preached a different gospel, and yet then you, you say that God revealed the gospel unto Paul, but yet how could he reveal the gospel to Paul if Peter was preaching the gospel? <laughs> That's a good question. And the answer is simple. The good news that God was preaching is that Jesus was the Messiah, and he was crucified, rose again, and he was buried and rose again. But that message, when Peter was preaching, was the gospel, death, burial, resurrection. But he wasn't saying, now this was to save you. Peter was saying, now get baptized in water. So something that we have to realize was that when the early church began, as they were going to Jews, there was emphasis on something other than just simply trusting what Jesus did. You had to trust in who Jesus was. So when Peter was preaching the good news that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, he was also stipulating with that, you must believe who Jesus is, and you must get baptized in water. Today, we don't do that. Today, we're saved by faith alone. In the gospel. Alright, now this will be plain. Hopefully this will be easy to understand as we continue. But go to Galatians chapter 1. You see, I don't want to preach anything that's not what the Bible says. But sometimes when you preach what the Bible says, people get confused. 
And yet God says that he is not the author of confusion. So why would people get confused? Well, either the Bible is a lie and it's full of errors and mistakes, which some believe and they're wrong, or the Bible is true. If the Bible is true and there's something in it you don't understand, then what should you do? Well, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So let's rightly divide the word of truth and see if we can't figure this out. Because it's not hard if you simply read the word of God. Galatians chapter 1, <clears throat> Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, he says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men, or man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul tells us that this gospel he received by revelation. I might even need a, let me use a completely different color marker here. He says, I received the gospel, Paul, by revelation of God. So the Apostle Paul says, the gospel that I preach, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, he said, God revealed that to me. Now that may or may not make sense to you. Because Peter went out preaching some good news. A gospel. And Peter and Paul spoke to each other. So why does Paul say that God revealed this to me, and not that he learned it from Peter? Why is Paul, that almost sounds like Paul's exalting himself, doesn't it? Well, no, in actuality, he's exalting God, saying, God told me this gospel to preach to the Gentiles. Why does Paul say that God gave it to him? Why doesn't Paul say that Peter and the early apostles and Jesus were preaching this, and I just preached what they preached? Well, the answer is that the book of Acts is a transitional book. And when you read the book of Acts, you cannot help but see that the book of Acts is it a book that changes and there are many changes in the book of Acts so you've got to get a hold of the book of Acts and when you do it's very plain to see how Paul could say that he received this gospel by revelation of God and it's very easy to look over here at Peter and see that even though Peter preached the good news of the death burial and resurrection there was something else that he preached too that made it a little bit different. It's almost like, and I guess I could say this, that, that there's two different good newses. Good news? One is the good news to the Jews, one is the good news to the Gentiles. Matter of fact, let me write that up there. I'll just abbreviate good news to Jews, and over here I'll type good news to Gentiles. Now, this is so important, and, and I'll put in parentheses, and Jews too, because today, Jews have to go through Paul's gospel to be saved. But unfortunately, very few Jews are saved today. But, as soon as the rapture takes place, these Jews will be right back under this message, and can be saved that way as well. So, in the tribulation period, it goes back to this message that Paul pre or Peter preached, believing in who Jesus is. Now, I've got a lot to show you today, so I've got to move. But watch this. Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. Whenever Paul is going and preaching, Paul always calls this gospel, he calls it my gospel. My gospel. Why does Paul say that? Why wouldn't he call it Peter's gospel? Because Paul wasn't preaching the exact same thing that Peter was preaching. Now, I am not what they call a hyper-dispensationalist. I know what they are, I know what they believe. But because there are hyper-dispensationalists out there that take this message to such an extreme that they completely mess it up, and guess what? Many preachers are afraid to preach this message because they're afraid, oh no, that someone will call them a hyper-dispensationalist. I am a Biblicist. I am a Bible believer. So I'm not going to lead you astray. I'm not going to tell you that Paul was the first one in the body of Christ because that's not what the Bible teaches. 
And that's what many hyper-dispensationalists say because they can't understand it. They see God revealing Paul the gospel so that Paul must be the first one in the body of Christ. No, these people got into the body of Christ. But they got in differently than we do through Paul. You see, over here, to get the Holy Spirit, you had to be baptized in water. Over here, we receive the Holy Spirit the very moment we believe in the gospel. And we're sealed, as I read in Ephesians 1.13. So right divisions is important. And when you study the Bible and rightly divide, you understand. So three times Paul calls the gospel that God revealed to him, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, my gospel. That's in Romans 2, 16. And Paul says in Romans 2, 16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Why doesn't he say according to the gospel? Why didn't he say according to the gospel of Jesus? Why doesn't he say according to the gospel that Peter preached to? Why does he always make that distinction according to my gospel? Romans chapter 16 and verse 25 says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So there was a mystery. I've told you before that there are seven mysteries that God has revealed unto Paul. So there were some revelations that God made into Paul, and Paul says that one of them is this gospel. But yet, many say, but that gospel was preached by Peter. It's the death, burial, and resurrection. Both Peter and Paul preached the death, burial, and resurrection. But when it came to the point of now, do this to get saved, one went one way, and one went the other way. This one said, now if you want the Holy Spirit, get baptized in water. Yes, Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Now, get baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit. Paul says Jesus died, was buried, rose again. He did it for your sins, so it's what he did. And when you believe that, you get the Holy Spirit. So yes, in a sense, it is right to say that Peter and Paul preached the same gospel, the same good news. Because both of them gave the right death, burial, and resurrection. And it was good news that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. But yet, also, they preached a little differently when it came to the punchline of how to get the Holy Spirit. If you know your Bible, hopefully you'll know where I'm coming from. Now, one more verse, 2 Timothy 2.8. And if you rightly divide, you've got to understand this. This is why there are false religious cults and sects in the Bible today. Because they don't rightly divide. Your Pentecostals, your Charismatics, want to be right here before the book of Acts is transitional, before it changes to Paul, and they want to say, I can receive the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues and having hands laid on me. And, and when the Pentecostals started, they used to say that you have to be baptized in water and come out literally speaking in tongues when you come out of the water. What is that? That's not rightly dividing the word of truth. That's trying to stay over here instead of coming over here to what God revealed to Paul. So do you see why it's important to rightly divide so that you don't fall into a false religious sect? You see, Peter was preaching to these Jews. If you're not a Jew, then that's not a message for you. Now go to uh, Galatia, uh, excuse me, 2 Timothy 2.8. One more time, Paul says, my gospel. He says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. According to my gospel. So how could... Paul call it my gospel if Peter preached that gospel before him shouldn't we call it Peter's gospel or Jesus gospel well that's the questions that I've been getting from people is the gospel is they say the death burial and resurrection well Peter preached the death burial and resurrection crucified buried rose again and if Paul preaches death burial and resurrection then aren't they both preaching the exact same thing well in that sense yes but over here, nowhere does it say that he did it for your sins. And over here, he says it's all for your sins that Jesus did it. Over here, if you hear death, burial, and resurrection, that's to point you to who died. So that's the message of who did it. Over here, Paul says, it's what he did that saves you. Not just who died and buried and rose again. You see, these early Jews had to believe who Jesus was, that he was the Messiah. Gentiles don't have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. If a Gentile wants to be saved, he has to trust the death, burial, and resurrection because it was for his sins. 
Now hopefully as we continue on here, you will see this. This is not a teaching that I made up. This is from the scriptures themselves. And is the only conclusion you can come to if you're a Bible believer. Because yes, they both preach death, burial, and resurrection. But after they preach that, Peter says, now be baptized in water and you'll receive the Holy Spirit. Paul says, if you trust the death, burial, and resurrection for your sins on your behalf, in your place for your sins, then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. When Paul goes around and wins people in the later part of Acts, he doesn't tell them to get water baptized. If they get water baptized, it's after they got the Holy Spirit, not before. So there is a literal transition that takes place in the book of Acts, a change. And there's a reason that it changes. And that explains why God says that God revealed unto Paul, Look, Paul, this is what I want you to preach. And yes, it, it mentions my death, burial, and resurrection, but it is a little bit different than this. Because this is the message of trusting what I've done. When the Jews came, their message was to trust who Jesus was. Trust Him as Messiah. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. And then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So Paul says 14 years after he started his ministry, and God revealed unto him this to preach. He then went back to the Jews, and he told them, this is what I'm preaching. And this is why I'm preaching it, because God told me to preach this for salvation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the Bible today. I'm going to show you that what God revealed to Paul, he took back to these early apostles and said, this is the message now. And I can prove from the scriptures that these early apostles said, oh, from now on then we will preach what Paul says, and no longer will we preach the Acts 2.38 message. And that is what the Word of God teaches. Why is that so important? Because there's many false denominations today, false churches, that do not understand this, and they're over here preaching a message that God gave to Jews, trying to force it to us Gentiles. You cannot get saved today by this early message. What is this early message? We will read it when we get to Acts uh, 2.38. But it's basically get baptized in water, and when you're baptized in water, you'll receive the Holy Spirit. That's not how we get the Holy Spirit. The very first verse we started this study with was Ephesians 1.13. And Paul says, when you believe the gospel, what Jesus did, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You receive it. The water does not give you the Holy Spirit. Faith alone is how you receive the Holy Spirit. So it cannot be denied there are two completely different ways in which someone got the Holy Spirit. Jews got it one way, Gentiles another. So as we go through this study, we'll find that God told Paul, look, don't just preach that I was died and buried and rose again. Preach that the very reason I did all that was to save you. And it was for your sins. And if people will believe that, then they'll be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. How different that is than, than Peter. Because Peter preached, yeah, Jesus died and was buried and rose again. Jesus died and buried and rose again. Jesus died and buried and rose again. But he says, now, if you're a Jew, you have to believe that he was the Messiah. And you have to believe that your Messiah has come. Now repent and get baptized in water to feel sorrow for killing your Messiah. Two different messages, even though they both contain the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection. Do you see that? What Paul says almost doesn't seem like it makes sense. How could Paul say, God revealed unto me the gospel, and then turn around and say in Galatians 2, what we just read, that God revealed unto him to go to the early apostles and tell them, hey, you guys are wrong. This is what you preach now. Either Paul is sent by God to straighten out the early church and tell them that God is now wants this preached, or Paul is a liar. And he's totally perverted the entire message of the early church. So which is it? Well, what I'm going to show you today is interesting because this message, it's almost like it's on hold. And God changed to go to this message for the church age. But the very moment that the rapture takes place, this early message right here will come right back into effect in the tribulation period. You say, how is that possible? Well, it's very easy. 
Jesus went to Jews, the early apostles went to Jews, preaching a message to Jews. When the rapture takes place, it's to take out the body of Christ. And so everything that was being preached right here to Jews goes back to being preached right here to Jews in the tribulation period. And I will explain that, hopefully, without any shadow of a doubt. So, <clears throat> what's going on? Why does it appear that there's Peter and Paul, and they seem to be all, you know, why do they... Why can't everybody just get along and preach the same thing in the Bible? Well, they do. But it takes a bit for that to happen. As you go through the book of Acts, that's what you see taking place. They start preaching this message. Then God calls, tells Paul, no, this is what I reveal unto you to preach. And then Paul goes back and says, this is what God said to preach now. This is the doctrine of the church from now on. And they say, oh, and they accept that. And then from then on, they all do preach the same message. But they all preach what was revealed to Paul. Hope you get that. So to answer this, to figure this out, to understand, <clears throat> let's go to Jesus and Peter. And let's look at what Jesus and Peter preached and why they preached it. And then we'll look at what Paul preached and contrast the two. And what this will do is help you to understand the difference between the who message and the what message. What do I mean when I mean that Peter preached who Jesus was and Paul preached what Jesus did? What does that mean? Why do I say that? Here we go. Let's start <coughs> with Jesus in John chapter 4. Now if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you need to realize that you're reading Old Testament. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all Old Testament until Jesus actually dies in those books. According to the book of Hebrews... The Bible teaches that a testament does not start without the death of a testator. So as soon as Jesus Christ shed his blood and paid for the sins of the world, as soon as he died, guess what? That started a new testament. And that new testament was not the Old Testament. The law ended. The law and the prophets were to John, the Bible says. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So grace began to enter into the world in a way to be saved by grace through what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. So that's something you've got to get a hold of. That's something that many today who claim to be Christians have no idea about. And that's what's so sad is there's many within the so-called Christian church today that have no idea, no idea, what the true gospel of salvation is. And they're lost and on their way to hell, because they don't rightly divide the word of truth. So when Jesus Christ showed up and began preaching, the message of Jesus, everywhere he went, was, I am the Christ. So let's make this message Jesus. And he kept saying that I am he. He kept saying that I'm the Christ. And he kept preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now the gospel of the kingdom is not Paul's gospel. If Paul's gospel is the gospel that saves, then how could it be the same gospel of Jesus if Paul says it was revealed to him by God? If Jesus was preaching this gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, then it wouldn't have been revealed to Paul. It couldn't have been revealed to Paul. It was already revealed to Jesus. So you have a problem. Jesus was not preaching the same gospel as Paul. The kingdom gospel was what Jesus was preaching. As you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, look for that. Look at how many times it says, and Jesus came unto them preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? The millennial kingdom. Jesus, as a Jew, came to Jews, preaching to Jews, I am the Messiah, I am the, the God of Israel, manifest in the flesh, I am he who saves, if you trust me as your Messiah, then I will bring in my kingdom. And that's what the Jews were waiting for. They read the law. They read the books of Moses. They read the prophecies of the prophets. And they said, there's a promised seed coming someday who is the Christ, who is the Messiah. And when he comes, he will bring in his kingdom. Well, they didn't realize there were two kingdoms. I have a message on that on YouTube, the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Jesus did bring in his kingdom. We today in the church age are under the kingdom of God. But the other kingdom, the literal kingdom, where he literally reigns on this earth, sitting in the throne of Jerusalem, speaking about Jesus, that is called the kingdom of heaven. 
That is the kingdom that the Jews rejected because they said, we will not have this man to rule over us. So Jesus said, okay, I'll just go right back up to heaven. I'll send a spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, where people can get saved, and I'll give them my Holy Spirit, God within them, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, something revealed to Paul. And then later on, I'll come back and set up my kingdom. So that's what happened. That's what took place. The Jews rejected the message of Jesus. What was Jesus' message? Who am I? Who is he? He's the Messiah. You either believe that or you don't. So let's look at a couple places where Jesus preaches this. John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he which is called Christ, uh, uh, when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Jesus says, I mean, you can't miss it if you read your Bible, like in your face, I'm the Messiah! <laughs> and he's even speaking to a Sumerian, which was only a half Jew. But he says, I am he. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. I am the promised seed of Israel, the one that comes as the king of the Jews. So that was the message of Jesus Christ. That was the good news that he preached. It was not the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection. Why? Because he hadn't died, nor was he buried or resurrected yet. So Jesus' gospel that he came when he preached was the good news that I am the Messiah. And you can't read the book of John without finding Jesus saying over and over and over, I am, I am, I am. There are seven I am's in the book of John. I am the door. I am the light of the world. I am the great shepherd. I am, the, I am that. I am all these things. I'm the branch. So Jesus is saying, I am He. I'm the Messiah. That was Jesus' message. And I'm bringing a kingdom. And it's up to you which one. John chapter 8, verse 21. Then said Jesus again to them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and, I shall die, and ye shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Verse 22. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, ye cannot come. Verse 23, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, and I am from above. Ye are of, the, of this world. I am not from this world. Jesus says, I come down from above. What is he saying? He's saying, I'm God in the flesh. I'm the Messiah. And then he says, I want to stop there in verse 24. So he says in verse 24, I said therefore unto you, that if ye shall die in your sins, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he... Ye shall die in your sins. Notice Jesus doesn't say, unless you believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're going to die and go to hell because you'll die in your sins. He doesn't say that. He says, unless you believe that I am He, you'll die in your sins. So unless you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, then you'll go to hell. So what was the message or the good news being preached during the time of Jesus? The good news was the Messiah is come and he's Jesus. Now, if you want to be saved, believe who Jesus is. And what we're going to see here in a second is when we get to this, Peter, the apostles, Jesus, John, they're all saying the same word over and over. They're all saying, let me put it over here in blue. They're all saying, believe in the name of Jesus. And all their emphasis is in, do you believe in the name? Why is that so important? What is the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is actually two words in one. The word Jesus is actually Je, which is short for Jehovah, and Seus, which is the Greek for saves. So the actual name of Jesus Christ is Jehovah saves. So if you believe in Jesus, or who he is, then you are believing that only God can save you. But the way to be saved here under this ministry was not trust the death, burial, and resurrection because there's been no death, burial, and resurrection. It was to trust that Jesus was the Messiah. That was the good news. Hey, the Messiah has come. Now, trust him. Trust. In other words, you had to believe that he was the Messiah. The early um, ministers, the, the so-called religious leaders of Israel, the Pharisees, when Jesus came, they would not believe that he was the Messiah. They did not want to accept him as Messiah. So that was the message of salvation in Jesus' time was, accepting him as Messiah by believing that he was Messiah. And how could you not with all the miracles that Jesus did, but yet they 
hated God and they refused to believe that Jesus was Messiah. That's why they crucified him. John 7, 26. But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? 27. Howbeit, we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Well, that's not true, because under the law they knew that he would come from a certain place. He'd be born of Bethlehem, of Judea. Uh, uh, he'd be come from Galilee. So, obviously, someone's not reading their Bible. That's where Jesus came from. Many scriptures prophesy of how the Messiah will come, and Jesus fulfilled them all. And then verse 28, Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Verse 29, But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. Why did they, why did they try to take Jesus? Because he stood up in the temple of the Jews and said, I am the Messiah. And they said, either that's true, and if it is, we have to believe it, and then we don't really want to believe that. Then, because if we do say that he is, then he's going to come in power and kick us out. And we're going to lose our power. So either that's true, or he's the biggest liar that ever lived, and that's called blasphemy, so we have to stone him. So the Pharisees, they weren't ready to say that Jesus was he. So they reject the message that Jesus preached. They reject the message of who Jesus is. So Jesus' message was that he was the Messiah, the promised seed of Israel. Now let's go to Peter's message. What did Peter preach? Did Peter preach the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 when he started his ministry? ministry? No. A thousand times no. Because even though Jesus had died, was buried, and rose again, he didn't tell people, trust that for salvation. That's what Paul teach, teaches. What he did is he went to those same Jews that Jesus preached to, and he said, now here's a continuation of his ministry. You must believe who Jesus is. And the Pharisees said, no, we won't believe who Jesus is, and they locked up Peter in jail. And they, they stoned Stephen, and they killed him, because they still wanted to reject that message that Jesus was the Messiah. Hope you can see that. So we go to Peter. Matthew chapter 16, and verse 13, Jesus says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus always liked to call himself the Son of Man, because he came in the form of a man. But yet he was God manifest in the flesh. And he wanted people to know, hey, I'm like you, only sinless. So that later they would receive this message that when he died on the cross, it was God dying in your place for your sins. So he said, who do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? And here we read in verse 14, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 13, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, You are the Messiah. Because that's what the word Messiah means. Messiah is the anointed one, or the Christ. So whenever the Bible says Christ, just make up in your mind, whenever Jesus is called the Christ, it's saying that He is Messiah. And so Peter speaks up and says, You are the Messiah. Now watch what Jesus Christ says here. This is awesome. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Verse 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So here we have a revelation, something that was revealed unto Peter. And what was revealed? God revealed to Peter... that Jesus was Christ or Messiah. Now when you get that in your mind and begin reading the book of Acts, then guess what you come across? This whole entire early message that is preached by Peter and the early apostles was all to preach that revelation. And that revelation was you must believe in the name of Jesus. You must believe that He is the Messiah. When you understand that, 
then you understand how God could tell later Paul, I'm giving you a revelation. And this is the revelation that you preach. So you see, the revelation to Peter was that Jesus is the Messiah. So Peter's good news that he preached was that Jesus is the Messiah. And he preached to Jews, Jesus is the Messiah. Not until you get to Acts chapter 10 and 11, then it starts to change to Gentiles, and then it starts changing to Paul. But everything before then is all dealing with preaching the message of who Jesus is, and you must believe that he's your Messiah. Then over here we see the revelation of God, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again, but it was all for our sins. And so the revelation is, don't just believe who Jesus is, trust what he did to save you. You know what that means? There are people that I know, I, I could tell you his name, but I don't, I don't ever like to mention names. But there's a guy here in town that has a church. And we went back and forth in letters and emails, and he does not understand this. And whenever he reads the Bible, and every time he reads, believe on Jesus, or believe in Jesus, he tells people, now if you'll just believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Well, I go farther than that. If I say, if you'll just trust what Jesus has done for you, then you'll be saved. Because I've been on the other side. When I was lost and people say, just believe in Jesus, I thought they meant, okay, well, I believe Jesus exists. So, am I saved now? <laughs> no. It's not enough just to believe who Jesus is. That doesn't save you. You know, in the book of James it says, Thou believest in one God, thou doest well. Even the devils believe and tremble. So if you believe who Jesus is, if you believe in Jesus, then you're no better than a devil. Matter of fact, the devil is better than you because when he thinks of Jesus, he trembles and you don't. So it's not just enough to believe who Jesus is. You may believe that Jesus is God. Well, good. That's who he is. But you're not going to heaven because you think Jesus is God. So what saves you is not that you believe who Jesus is. What saves us today is believing the fact that what Jesus did for us was all that it took to give us salvation. And that if we'll trust his death, burial, and resurrection, we'll trust his payment on a cross of our sins, that's when he saves us. I hope that's clear to you. I hope you understand that. Let me show you some more verses. Now with that in your mind, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, now you start to understand why all the emphasis is on the name of Jesus. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Why doesn't it say that believe the gospel? <laughs> because this is the early part of the church where they're going and preaching, believe on the name, believe on the name. These early Jews got the Holy Spirit and got saved by believing who Jesus was. And as the book of Acts transitioned to Paul, the Gentiles got saved by trusting what Jesus did for them, trusting in the gospel. Do you see that difference? John chapter 3 and verse 18. Over and over and over we see the word name. John 3.18 He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 2.23 Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed his name when they saw the miracles which Jesus did. So they were believing in the name of Jesus. What does it mean to believe in the name of Jesus? Jehovah, God, saves. That's the name. So even Jesus' name has the name God in it. So they were believing in who Jesus was. They believed that he was the Messiah, the promised seed. He was God manifest in the flesh. So they were trusting in Jesus that he was to come to set up his kingdom. And that's what they believed, that he was coming to set up his kingdom. John 20 and verse 31. So you've got to see the importance of Paul because Paul just doesn't preach who Jesus is. He tells us that what Jesus did was for us as it paid for our sins, and that's how we're saved. That is the difference between the who and the what of salvation. It's not enough today to just believe who Jesus is and expect God to take you to heaven. He won't. You must trust what Jesus did for you, and that's how you're saved. Trust the blood, the blood atonement of Christ. John chapter 20, verse 31, But these are written, these things are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through, what? Through the gospel? Through his name. Through his name. Now back to Peter. Acts chapter 2. I wonder if I'll even be able to finish this. Acts chapter 2, verse 38.
Acts 2, and what we find in Acts chapter 2 is Jesus has died and was buried and rose and risen again. So Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And here we have Peter going and preaching. And who is he speaking to in Acts chapter 2? Well, in Acts chapter 2, Peter is speaking to Jews. 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of, in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now look at verse uh, 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. The emphasis was that Jesus was the Lord and that he was the Christ. Yes, he said he's the Jesus that you crucified, that buried and rose again. So he'd always mention that Jesus that buried and rose again, but he'd always make the emphasis that believe who he is. And now be baptized in water in his name, because by so doing you prove that you believe who he is. When John the Baptist came, he came baptizing in water. Why? So that the people would know that the Messiah was near. And that's what John preached. He says, I come baptizing in water to make manifest to Israel that the Messiah is coming. So why were people baptized in the, under John's ministry? He said, make straight the way of the Lord. He says, when you're baptized in water, that's showing God that you want to be clean when he comes. Because you're expecting him. So they were expecting, expecting the Messiah to come. And in this early part of the book of Acts, to believe who Jesus was and being baptized in water was to identify with his name and was the way that the Jews showed God that they believed in who Jesus was. And that was the message preached by Peter. Now, <clears throat> so much to go through here. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. Peter. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Name. It's all about the name. The name. I'll go back to Acts 2.21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who is he speaking to? Verse 22. You men of Israel, <laughs> hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Why? How could he do those miracles? Because he was God. He was the Messiah. That's the only way he was able to do those miracles. So this is what the Bible teaches. This is the difference between what Peter began to preach because he was following Jesus in John's earthly ministry and how we have a change to what Paul preached. So this is what the Bible teaches about the good news or the gospel. Now, go to Acts 3.16. 3.16 The Bible says And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So notice that. Through his name, Peter preaches. Through faith in his name. So did they preach the same gospel at the beginning, Peter and Paul? No. Because Paul was making all the emphasis in faith in the name of Jesus. But over here, all the emphasis, let's contrast these two, on Paul was faith alone in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Peter was all about believing who Jesus is, and then getting baptized in water to show that you believe that. While Paul was preaching all what Jesus did. Because when you believe what Jesus did, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now you can baptize in water after if you want to. But the water baptism is not what gave the Holy Spirit. When under Peter, it was. So both Peter and Paul preached <clears throat> the death, burial, and resurrection. They both preached that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. But Peter preached that because he said that proves who Jesus is. The fact that Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, when no one in the history of the world has ever done that by their own power, proves that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Messiah. 
And that was the message of Peter. Now, Paul says the fact that the death, burial, and resurrection happened isn't what saves us. It's why it happened. It was done to save us because it was for our sins. So over here, you trust what God did. While over here, you trust who Jesus was. Oh, I don't want to repeat myself. So Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection. Quickly, Acts chapter 2. Let's look at the Peter of, uh, some of the preaching of Peter. Acts 2.22, you men of Israel hear these words. 23, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Verse 24, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Boy, death, burial, and resurrection preached by Peter. But he doesn't tell people, now trust the blood atonement. Now trust what Jesus did. No. He mentions to them, this is the Jesus that died, was buried, and rose again. Now believe who he is. So he's telling about the, the death, burial, and resurrection, but he isn't telling people to trust the death, burial, and resurrection. Verse 31. He's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Um, verse 32. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Over and over and over, it cannot be denied that when Peter preached, he preached death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Jesus died, was buried, rose again. Jesus died, buried, rose again. In his preaching, he said that. But when he got to the end of his preaching, he said, now get baptized in water and put faith in the name of him. In other words, believe that Jesus is your Messiah, Mr. Jew, because he was a Jew preaching to Jews. I could, I could continue here, but let's, let's go to Acts chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorif glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, who? Who he was. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life. See how all the emphasis is on who Jesus is? He's the just. He's the Holy One. He's the Prince of Life. <laughs> so the message of Peter in his early ministry was all about who Jesus was. I could continue with many verses there, but I've got to finish this. Acts 4, 10 through 12, if you want to look up some more. Acts 5, 29 through 32. Actually, this one we need to read. Acts chapter 5, verse 29 through 32. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Men And the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with the right hand to be the prince and a savior for the, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And then verse uh, 32. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So he just told us Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And then he says, now, he'll give you salvation if you obey him. Now people go over here to Paul and they say, well, that means obey the gospel. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's not, that's not given or revealed to him yet. So what does he mean, them that obey him? Acts 2.38. In water baptism. If you obey by being baptized in water, then you take the message and prove that you believe in the name of Jesus by being baptized. So there was a little element of works, it seems like, in this early part when Peter was preaching. Acts chapter 7, verse 52, Stephen's preaching. He mentions the death of Jesus. Philip, Acts chapter 8. I just don't have time to go into all these scriptures. But this should be enough to prove that this message mentioned the death, burial, and resurrection, but did not stress to trust the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. This message of Peter and the early apostles, the stress of that message was to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. That was it. That's why they were preaching. To get you to that end result of believing that Jesus is your Messiah and get water baptized. That was that message. Now Paul's message. Well, as we go through the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 9, Paul gets saved. After he gets saved, in, in chapter 10 and 11, it goes back to Peter and guess what? Gentiles are getting saved. 
So we see the change from Jews to Gentiles because the Jews as a whole rejected this message. The Jewish nation, the Jewish religious leaders said, no, we don't want Jesus as our Messiah. We don't care if He is our Messiah. We don't want Him as Messiah. And so God, looking down from heaven, said, okay, if they don't want the truth, I'll send it to the Gentiles. And I'll call Paul, and I'll tell him what to preach to the Gentiles. Because it's not the same message that was preached. It cannot be. Because Jesus, a Jew, came to Jews, and he wanted the Jews to believe that he was their Messiah. If we went around preaching this message today, we'd be going to a bunch of Gentiles and saying, now you must believe that Jesus is your Messiah. And the Gentiles would be like, what's a Messiah? Most people that aren't saved, that aren't Jews, don't know what that word even means. No, 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 you must believe that Jesus is your Messiah. They have no idea what you're talking about. But if you go to a Gentile and you tell them what Paul says, hey, did you know God loves you so much that he died for you? He doesn't want you to go to hell. You know, Gentile, a lot of Gentiles believe in the word hell. They know what hell is. And did you know God loved you so much that he died in your place for your sins? He shed his blood for you. And if you'll trust what he did for you, then you can go to heaven. Now, a Gentile will get that. He'll understand that. But he won't say, well, I believe Jesus is a, my Messiah for me and for my nation, because his nation isn't Israel. <laughs> do, you, do you Okay, I think you see it. I hope so. So I'll have to go quickly through here, but in Acts chapter 13, they send Paul out as a missionary. All right. When Paul goes out in Acts chapter 13, I believe this chapter shows that when Paul goes out in Acts 13 as a missionary, he goes out to Jews and he preaches at the first of this message. But then he preaches this message. And it's like a light switch goes on and they realize, oh, oh, so this is the message that's to be preached to the Gentiles. Let me show you that in Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verse 14 through 16. And we read here. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. What is the synagogue? The Jewish temple, or the Jewish synagogue, the place where they came and, and talked to the Jews. Verse 15, And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. 16, Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. And then he goes on there in that chapter and starts talking about Jesus. Verse 24, he says, Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised into Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming at the baptism of repentance unto the people of Israel. So he's talking about baptism. He's going back to this ministry. And he's telling them about this. And then in verse 29, And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher, but God raised him from the dead. Verse 33, Raised up Jesus again. So, verse 37, Whom God raised again saw no corruption. So he's going and he's telling them all this message. The Jesus that died was buried and rose again. That's your Messiah. He's preaching to Israel. But all of a sudden, Paul injects into this message something over here for our sins. Something that Peter never said. You see, Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. It was something you had to obey and do in order to get the Holy Spirit. But Paul tells, now if you want the Holy Spirit, it's not by this over here. It's by believing what Jesus did. What did Paul say? Verse 38, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Christ Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So this word shows up for the first time. Justified. You see, our justification for us today is not just believing who Jesus is. If all I believed in this world was that Jesus was Messiah, and that's it, and I never believed anything else, I would split hell wide open when I died, because that would not save me. But yet that was the early message of the early church. What must I believe to be saved? That Jesus Christ died in my place for my sins. He was buried and rose again. And that by His death I can be justified by all things in which I could not be justified by the law of Moses. So not by works, but by grace alone. 
So Paul comes up with grace and he comes up with justification. And now we go to Acts chapter 46. Or well, Acts 13, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing, he's still preaching to Jews here, he says, But seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So Paul, preaching to the Jews, starts out preaching this message, but then preaches this message. And they say, we reject it. He says, okay, if you reject eternal life, I'll take it to the Gentiles. So eternal life is justification by faith in the gospel. All of what Paul writes in all of his epistles. Acts chapter 15, and I've read this before, I don't have much time to read it. But Acts chapter 15, people come together and the early church meets, and Paul and Peter meet together. And we, they sit down, and Paul says, well, I'm going to tell you all something. At verse 3, uh, there's a lot of Gentiles that got saved by my preaching. And it says, it caused great joy among all the brethren. All the Jews said, well, praise God, Gentiles get saved too. And then Peter stands up and says, in verse 7, well, you heard that how God the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. What Peter did, now I didn't have time to go to that, Acts chapter 10. Peter goes to a Gentile named Cornelius and he starts preaching. Jesus was buried, rose again from the dead. And when he yet spoke those words, the Holy Spirit fell on those which believed. You see, Peter was going to continue this message and say, now listen to me, get baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit, but he didn't get that far. And he got saved just by preaching this. And then, he says, well, all right, let's baptize them now. <laughs> Do you see the change? In the beginning, the Holy Spirit came by being baptized in water and believing in the name of Jesus. Then the change went to Gentiles. They got saved and were sealed with the Holy Spirit the moment they believed. Then he comes over here to Paul, and Paul says, you're justified by faith alone the moment you trust the gospel. And then people got saved the moment they believed. Baptism came later. They were saved and then baptized. They weren't baptized to get the Holy Spirit. They got it by faith in the gospel. And so, here in Acts chapter 15, Peter says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. So Peter says, uh, Paul's over here preaching justification by faith and by justification by grace. He says, that's different than my ministry and my preaching. But now I see that that's what God is doing. He's using this gospel. So I believe in salvation by faith alone, not by works. So do you see how the early apostles got on the same page with Paul and began preaching Paul's gospel? So many other verses that I had listed here, so much more that I wanted to say. But I guess i got to end sometime. So let me close with this. When you see this clearly, it's very hard to get sucked into a false religious system. It's very hard to get into a cult. It's very hard to become anything but a Bible believer. The last thing I wanted to say about this, and I'll close, is this, this message right here to these Jews. This early message was believe who Jesus is. Believe He's your Messiah. Be baptized in water. Put your faith in His name and obey Him. That message petered out. <laughs> yes, that's a pun. That message slowly changed in the book of Acts, which is a transitional book. And it changed so that Gentiles could get saved. But, when the rapture takes place, the very moment that rapture takes place, Paul's all over. That's the end of Paul, the rapture. That's the end of Paul's gospel. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, If, an, if though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, you let him be accursed. But yet we go to the book of Revelation, the Bible says there was an angel in heaven preaching the everlasting gospel. Fear God and keep his commandments. Well, obviously you can't have two gospels at the same time. So the moment the rapture takes place and the body of Christ is cut out, all saved people, this message that Jesus preached, that John preached, and Peter and the early apostles here, two Jews, will come right back full in effect in the tribulation period. So if you are a Jew, and you want to get saved, you're going to have to be baptized in water, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, probably to receive the Holy Spirit. That would probably be the only way you can do it. You'll have to believe in the name of Jesus. You'll have to obey Him. Which means you'll have to die as a martyr for Him if they capture you. Because the Antichrist will be trying to kill all the Jews. And you'll have to trust who Jesus is. So you see, I'm preaching, and a lot of my preaching, it's all, I'm preaching the Gospel of Paul. But the other day I realized, you know what, I'm right here. The Bible says we're in the last days, the days of the day of apostasy. And all these videos I have on YouTube preaching the gospel of salvation because I want to be see people get saved, that would all be for naught if the rapture took place right now. And I would be omitting these people and telling them how they get saved. So if we get raptured out of here, you can't go to Paul anymore. Paul was only for this dispensation of the grace of God. When it goes to the tribulation period, there's not much grace, if any. Because this will be a time when the wrath of God falls upon the earth. This will be a time when the Antichrist is ruling, and he'll be killing people. You say, well, will there be Christians in the tribulation? Some people say yes, some people say no. <clears throat> I don't have time to take you to the passage, but there's a passage of the Bible that makes it, look that makes it look like when the rapture takes place, the Holy Spirit of God is taken out. So there will be no Holy Spirit in the whole entire tribulation. Some people preach that. It's a possibility. I, when I don't know, I don't go there. But if that's the case, <clears throat> then that means there won't be any Christians. Now there might be people that are followers of Jesus. But according to the Bible, there will be people who are beheaded for the testimony of faith in Jesus Christ. So what I'm saying is this. If you miss the rapture, you're in trouble. And you're going to have to determine in your mind that I believe this message, who Jesus is. And that I am willing to die for Jesus Christ by not taking the mark of the beast and starving to death, if that's the way it must be. Or allowing them to chop my head off, if that's how it must be. Because if you deny Jesus and who he is in the tribulation, then you lose salvation. You're not saved. So I just wanted to present that today and hopefully answer some questions. I know I went a little long, but I also wanted to present that because this is the gospel for today. It's Paul's. But as soon as the rapture takes place and Paul is gone, they're back under this. So they're back under the who message. And so if the rapture does take place, and you're watching this video, and millions of people have disappeared worldwide, you need to look at this and say, well, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And I believe that Jesus is the Savior. And I give Him everything. I trust Him. I trust His name. I trust who He is. I follow Him. I will obey Him to the end and never deny Him. Now, you don't have to go through the tribulation. If you're watching this video and the rapture hasn't taken place yet, why don't you get saved? Why don't you trust the gospel? Believe in what Jesus has done for you for the justification of your sins. You're saved by grace when you trust the gospel. I don't want anybody to go into the tribulation. That's why I preach this message of salvation. But I also want to be careful in case the rapture does take place that people see that that was preached for a purpose to the world, to the Jews. And in that tribulation period, there will be many Jews that come to Jesus Christ. And the way they come to Jesus Christ is they must believe that He was the Messiah of Israel. The reason we have a church age today is because the Jews rejected their Messiah. The reason there's a tribulation is so that God afflicts and sends those Jews through tribulation so that they will be driven to their Messiah. That's why there's the tribulation so that they'll look for and seek their Messiah. But the Bible also says there'll be a false Messiah, the Antichrist. And it says it would be possible that they could deceive the very elect. He's going to come, the Antichrist, and look so much like he really is Jesus, but they're going to have to go, huh? Huh? Which one is right? Well, the right one is the Lord Jesus Christ. Any other is a false Christ with a false kingdom and a false gospel. So there it is. I tried to present it all. I had some more verses I wanted to read. But I hope this makes clear. <clears throat> when I say that Peter preached the gospel, he preached the death, burial, and resurrection. 
And he eventually preached for our sins, for our justification, salvation by grace, as Paul did. But not when he first started. When he first started, he preached, This Jesus whom you killed, who was crucified and rose again, you must believe in his name, and through faith in his name, by obeying him in water baptism, you're saved. That was the early ministry of Peter. And it changed. I guess I'll close with this. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 7. So that's why there's a change. So there's people out there that say, Peter and Paul preach two completely different Gospels. Well, yes in a sense, because Peter's Gospel was who Jesus is, and Paul's Gospel was trusting in what Jesus did. So in that sense, yeah, they're correct. But if your gospel is death, burial, and resurrection, then it's not correct to say they preach two different gospels because they both preach death, burial, and resurrection. Every time Peter went to a Jew and preached to him, he said, you remember that Jesus that you killed who was buried and rose again? Yeah, that Jesus who died and was buried and rose again, that's your Messiah. So he preached death, burial, and resurrection. But his emphasis was trust him as Messiah. Jesus came and says, yeah, I want to tell you about the guy who died and was buried and rose again. He did it for your sins because he was God manifest in the flesh. So if you trust what he did, then you're saved. You see the difference? So when we go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 7, Paul says, But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncursed circumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. And it continues on, verse 8, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. God used Peter in the early part of his ministry. Many Jews came to Jesus Christ. And through water baptism and through faith in the name of Jesus, trusting that he was the Messiah, they got into the body of Christ because they received the Holy Spirit. But they did not receive the Holy Spirit the same way we do. We receive the Holy Spirit the moment we believe, Ephesians 1.13. The water baptism does not give us the Spirit. You can be baptized in water if you want after you're saved, but it has nothing to do with salvation. You're not saved by water baptism like they had to be over here. So two different messages. One was stressing who Jesus was. The other was trust what Jesus did. Now Acts 15. Paul went to the early church and told them all about what God revealed to him. And I believe they all said, okay, from now on we'll preach that. And you can't help but see that if you read the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 18 tells us that Peter picked up the message of, of Paul. Because he says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yeah, and he closes his book, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, He understood the message of grace that Paul received is the message that we preach today. So there was a transition, there was a change. I hope you see it. I hope you understand it. I hope you're saved today. And if you are, you'll go to heaven at the rapture and that'll be great. If you're not and you're left behind, remember that message of Peter because it's coming back. If you miss the rapture, you've got to go under that message for the tribulation. So don't miss the rapture. Please get saved. If you're lost, get saved before it's too late. So thank you for watching this. This has been the message today. I hope it's a blessing to you. God bless. See you next week.